So we're going to be taking a look at the use ref hook. Now this one we're going to start with the most obvious use case, which is storing a reference to a component, say an input field or a div or something, and then being able to reference that node in your application. So for example, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a button, and whenever I click the button, it's going to focus the input field here. And so we can use a reference for that. And then we're going to get into some of the other use cases you can use use ref for. All right, so let's start with the thing that you're going to use it pretty much the most for. So I'm going to say const input ref. So we're going to create a new variable, and I'm going to say use ref here. So this is our new hook, and I'm going to say use ref and import it from React. So now what I do with this is I can pass this to whatever component I want to get the reference of it. So in case my input field here, and this works pretty much the same as create reference if you're used to class components in React. So I pass it in here, and then I have reference to this input field now. So what I can do, I can have a button that says focus, and we're gonna do on click. And I'm just gonna start by logging what the input ref is. Now you'll notice we have to say dot current to get the current value of the reference. So I'm going to say click, and you can see I have reference to the input DOM node, if you will, um, and we can do whatever we want with that. We could call any methods on there uh, or read the values of stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say dot focus on it. And so I'm gonna come over here, and when I hit focus, you see my input field is focused over here. And so that's the main use case I'd say for use ref, or the one that I use the most, is getting reference to some kind of React component and then being able to use that somewhere in my application where I need to like imperatively call stuff and this will not cause a re-render, for example, and just focus, or if we need to do any get any value, like get the bounding, get bounding rectangle, I think. I forget the name of it, we're not gonna be able to call it, but uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. The next thing I wanna go over is, and why don't I just keep the dot focus there, is the other stuff you can use the reference for. This is basically anything you want to store a reference to. It doesn't have to be a DOM node or a React component, I guess. We can store, for example, integers in here. So what I'm going to do, another use case I use for it, is to store the number of times a component has rendered. So why don't we do this for the hello component? Let's bring this back. So I'm going to say renders, and I'm going to store uh, an integer inside of this reference. So let's import it. And then all I'm going to do is just console log, and I'm going to say hello renders. And I'm going to say this will just re render. We need to say dot current to get reference to the zero there. This is just going to render zero every single time. What I'm going to add is plus plus, so it increments every time the console log is shown. Now the thing about this current is we can update the value of it whenever we want to, and it's not going to cause a re-render. So if you were to have like instant variables on your classes, this is the same use case. You can put stuff on there like that, which is not tied to React re-rendering. For example, instead of putting in your state, you can store in a ref if you want to. All right, so let's just uncomment this right here. Oops. And take a look at that. All right, I need to just uncomment these one at a time, I think. There we go. Um, let's add a show hello back. And we're gonna say use state true. All right, so we can clear all this stuff. And of course, as I'm typing here, we can see how many times hello is rendered. Um, we can toggle it off gone, toggle it back, it restarts there. Um, and again, we can store whatever we want in this. So it doesn't have to just be uh, numbers, it can be objects, it can be functions, whatever we like. So another use case that I use for this is uh, with use fetch. So it's helpful to know whether a component has unmounted. And so we can prevent an error when we try setting a state on a component that is uh, has been unmounted. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's basically cause an error real quick. So I'm gonna move the logic of calling uh, the API and displaying the numbers over here. I'm gonna move it over to our hello example. So I'm gonna just move this right here and copy this all over. And let's import use state, use effect, 
and we can import our use fetch. And I'm going to just bring that over to my hello example. Oh, dang it. I undo copy again. Okay, so now I'm basically just put all that code inside of hello here. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to unmount hello uh, while the data is loading. And then we try updating the state and that's going to cause a problem. So I basically want to make this extra slow. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say set timeout and we're going to wait for some amount of time. Let's make it two seconds. And then we are going to update the state. All right, so let's, let's take a look at our example here. So now if I increment, um, it's just gonna take a second and then this should update. And let's go to our hello. We're kind of done with this example here. I'm gonna comment out the use ref for that. All right, so let's go to our problem now. So the problem that occurs is if I increment and then I toggle this off. Well, also if this fails, so let's refresh and try that again. All right, so we're gonna increment toggle this off. So you'll notice what happens is it's going to try updating the state when the component is gone and we get this little warning in React. So if you've seen that warning before, that's why. You tried calling set state when the component is gone. So we can use references to help us solve this problem. So now what I can say is I can say const is current is usually the name I'll give it. Use ref. And we're gonna put this inside of our use fetch hook. So by default, I'm gonna say it is current. So I'll say is current is true. And then I'm gonna say use effect. And I'm gonna say uh, empty bracket here, and I'm gonna return a cleanup function. So this function is only gonna be called, called when the component is going to unmount. And so we're gonna just say is current dot current is equal to false. And so whenever this value is false, we know the component is about to unmount. So in our code, right before we set uh, set state, we can say if is current dot current, then we call set state. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna load the value just fine when we increment here. But now if I increment and I toggle it off, what's gonna happen when the data loads is it's no longer going to call set state because the current value is false. Now you could also go about trying to cancel the fetch statement, but this is another way you can know whether the value of the current component has been unmounted yet is you can store that in a ref. So that is basically the basics of use ref. You can store whatever value you want in here and then you access it with dot current. Um, we didn't do an example with functions, but again, I could store a function here that I like. Uh, we can console, let's, do, let's just make a function real quick and see what that looks like. Let's go to our app here. And we're going to say the, the hello function. And we're just going to console log hello. And so there's some use cases where you want to put this stuff on a ref that comes up. So we can say hello.current and call it like that. So now when I push focus, it's going to say hello and focus at the same time. And again, we can store objects, whatever you like. Treat it as you would, for example, on a class component, uh, fields, or uh, instant variables that you would store on the class, uh, as opposed to stuff you'd store in the state. But there you go. That is the introduction to use ref.